But for me, what I've liked about American public education, and it's a two-edged sword or a two-sided coin, it's an education of opportunity. It's an education of democratic opportunity. What I mean by that is a youngster can go to school and fail and fail and mess up and then make it. In the world I came from, at each level of failure, you're sorted into a particular group which could be left behind. So I really like that democratic impulse. Now, the other part of it, sometimes it means that uh, standards are not always as strong as they, as they, sh as they should be. Um, and I, I think sometimes that that has pulled down quality. When I first came here, people were saying, well, why would you go to study American education? And I'll just say, because it's tremendously democratic and open. But the London Times, maybe four odd years ago, it had an editorial, and it said, why is everybody decrying that? And remember, it's representative in some ways of uh, conservative England. Uh, why is everybody decrying American education? And then it went on to say, well, wait a minute. Who's the world's leadest leading economy? Where are all the innovators come from? Where are a significant number of the world's leading universities? And he, the, um, the Times just listed off a series of accomplishments in this country and said, now, how can all this happen on a crummy educational system? And I think that's, that's part of my rather than a phenomenal decline is, where I would ask more of the question is, where are we now and how can we critique either imbalances or weaknesses in the, in, in the system to strengthen what we have, to strike out even in new directions to serve all kids? That's, that, and that's also an economic challenge. Although, to me, it's more importantly a human challenge first, a fairness challenge. I think many um, independent schools are a guarantee of future success in the economy. And what's happening? The parents, if you have, have a certain commonness together. They are willing to pay out money, and there's research, by the way, that bases this. They will ensure that homework uh, takes place. They are supportive of what is happening in the school. The, their diversity in, its, in each school is somewhat narrow, so the expectation is somewhat higher. And I think people are paying for the, almost the economic and social consequence. Whereas the public school, it has to embrace all. The fact is, Kent County, if you go into different homes, you go into one home and a little one of three or four or five is listening to a vocabulary of 5,000 words. And another little one of three, four or five is going to another household and there's a vocabulary of five, six hundred words. In one home, there's color and uh, colors and experiences and trips and books. In the other one, there's survival, there is frustration. The children in each case can be equally intelligent if we were able to measure what has happened. But the fact is the environment and the opportunity is so dramatically different that one group one youngster is already on the path to success. The other youngster is already on the path to difficulty. I'll, I'll put it that way. Now, one of the school boards have um, a legal responsibility. They tend to be very focused on the county, and that's very understandable. But I would like to see school boards take an um, an outward dimension to their work. In other words, to look to the community, to educate the community about what teachers are able to do and the supports they, they need. And the community is parents upping expectations, asking for cooperation, and even running programs to help 
Because we have children having children who haven't a clue how to rear a children. So uh, I know some will not like this, but we need to be either, and so many don't go to churches anymore. That used to be the place where you would educate. So we need to have alternatives, helping people to be fair to their children, helping people to help their children. But that's not just parents. How about the workplace? How many, and I know they're into profit and all this, but they're also part of the society and their success depends in large part on the success of their workers and the, the success of the consumer. So I would like to see, I would like school boards asking different types of employers, be they um, working with uh, state government in some dimension or factories or shops, asking the churches to do something. And what are all the sectors of the community that we can use to enhance the possibilities attached to parenthood. Well, what, what, one group alone, the people at the coalface, the teachers, I don't see them being given the freedom, the opportunity to take their experience, to take their hopes, to be given time to discuss and rework and reshape what happens in their individual schools and in their individual classes. I, I accept common goals, I accept common objectives, all these things, but in the end, the teachers are the ones who only know this group of students, who only know this school. And so, um, I know I'm wandering here, but I see, I would argue that some of our priorities in our school system do not allow us to use the strengths in those human beings called teachers and the